Hello everybody and welcome back to another Captain's Academy episode with your instructor Chase and today I'm going to be talking about this evasive maneuver skill. It's a question that came up recently on my Discord server where someone was like, is this actually a good skill to get if you're a CV player? And my answer to that is, well it depends. It depends on, well first of all, it depends a lot on you the player. If you are someone who has great APM, you're able to micromanage a lot of stuff, you're able to keep track of a lot of stuff, then this skill is, well, actually quite beneficial. If, however, your APM isn't that great, or your micromanagement is a little lackluster with a lot of squadrons, then I would definitely say avoid this skill, um, because this skill demands a lot out of you, the player. So let's take a look at the skill in a bit more detail. Uh, first things first, this skill, if you read the description, it says it only takes effect for strike aircraft when they're returning to the carrier. So you might be thinking, wait, so it's only in effect after you've done a strike? Well, no. It takes effect as soon as you press the F key on your keyboard. So let's say you have your bomber selected. They could be loaded. You haven't carried out a strike with them. You press the F key, and boom, immediately you get all the bonuses. So knowing that, and then looking at the bonuses themselves, the minute you hit the F key, your aircraft have a 20% reduction to detectability to your strike aircraft. Now normally strike aircraft are detected at 8 kilometers out. You hit the F key, now you've got the detectability down to 6.4. That is useful in some scenarios as well, which I'll cover a little bit later. The other major buff is the 75% HP to your strike aircraft when they're returning. This combined with good positioning of your carrier can be used to execute strikes on very heavy AA uh, targets. So that I'll get also to a little bit. And finally, of course, the minus 30% airspeed. This is the one that really is not fun at times. Because instead of, let's say, you conducting a strike mission and then letting the planes auto return with that speed boost, now you've got to do an extra step. You've got to manually click your aircraft back to where your carrier is and then also queue up the return thing. Not only that, but if you're moving your carrier, when the aircraft come into land, the 30% reduction is really bad because it makes your plane super, super, super slow. And in order to counter that, you actually have to put your ship into reverse to get the aircraft back onto your carrier faster. So it's kind of that very micro heavy skill that again requires people with good APM, uh, you know, good sort of overall micromanagement uh, in order to use efficiently. So giving you a more, I guess, concrete example of this skill versus no skill in action. First things first, I'm gonna say no skill, right? I'm just gonna approach things normally. So this is midway tier 10 armor piercing dive bombers. And I'm going to go and attack a Des Moines full AA spec with defensive fire. And most of you can already kind of figure out what's going to happen. I am most likely going to be losing most, if not all of my aircraft before I can even touch this Des Moines. So here we go, trying to get this dive bomb off, and as you can tell, my squadrons are just getting absolutely shredded. In fact, I get no bombs off at all, and the Des Moines is completely safe. Now we're gonna try the same thing, but using the evasive maneuver skill. Now to use it, unfortunately, you do have to kind of approach a ship from the opposite side of how you would normally do it, because what you have to do is you have to fly the aircraft to a point where the enemy ship that you're going to attack is in between the aircraft and your carrier. So as you can tell where my carrier is right now, you see where the last spotted indicator for the Des Moines is, and you see where I have to fly the aircraft to. I've got to put that Des Moines in the middle. Now once again, the Des Moines is going to be popping defensive fire as soon as my aircraft get within range of its AA. And as you can tell, there we go, defensive fire is enabled. And you'll notice, first things first, that my aircraft are a lot slower, but they are also quite a bit tankier. And even under the defensive fire of a Des Moines, I'm still going to be able to get strike aircraft through. And so you'll see here, I'm able to get at least the bombing off here. Not the greatest number of hits. RNG does, of course, play a role here. But I was able to get at least some damage off on that Des Moines. Had I got lucky, hit a couple of citadels, who knows, Des Moines could have taken a lot more damage. Once again, conducting the test, this time with the torpedo bombers. Now the midway torpedo bombers are tier 8, um, with of course the module to buff them against the full AA Montana. Normal attack profile, so just kind of going straight in, lining up and going for the run. Typically I would get through maybe 3 to 4 torpedoes out of 12 planes. 
um, which means that sort of the damage versus the amount of planes you're throwing away not really worth it however using the skill but again having to take that longer route you know setting up into a proper position you can get more planes through the AA and I will show you in this particular instance say Montana again with the full AA spec coming in with all the torpedo bomber squadrons while we're waiting for this to happen um, there's one other thing I also kind of have to mention which is that this skill can be one of those useful skills in those last ditch holy crap the enemy fighters got me lined up in a good strafe right without the skill you're likely let's say in that one really good strafe to lose all your planes but you know with the skill in that oh crap I can't do anything else moment you can press the F key and your aircraft will immediately get that 75% buff to their durability which means that the strafe could potentially still leave you with aircraft and you won't lose entire squadrons but again that's kind of a micro heavy thing again it requires you the player to be very very good with your micromanagement to be very good with your awareness for you to take sort of full advantage of the skill all right so as you can tell right now my squadrons are approaching the montana and they're going to be under the a fire of the ship and once again as i'm passing by i'm going to be executing a strike in this particular instance as you can tell i am going to have more of my planes get through this montana's aa and there we go strikes going in and you'll see that i have one completely unscathed squadron which means that in most cases um without using the skill i'm getting through maybe three to four against the full a spec montana with the skill usually be able to get through about six to seven torpedoes which in terms of damage is quite a bit better and can make strikes worthwhile the other use for the skill really involves sort of scouting and it's not something that i see people being able to use in randoms much so it is potentially more of a competitive thing although again like i said it's very micro intensive very apm intensive and I just don't think a lot of people are going to be able to use it right. And what it involves is using that detectability buff that you get, dropping you down to 6.4 kilometers. And that essentially puts you within the AA envelope of some ships. And then what you do is you sort of dance around their outer edge AA by getting that buff, which causes your planes to be very, very durable. And you sort of just dance in and out, in and out, in and out of that AA bubble while keeping as many ships as possible lit up. The advantage mostly being you're able to keep potentially ships a little bit further back that would have been unspotted. Now you're going to be able to spot them because you're a little bit closer, right? While at the same time not losing planes to the AA. Still, all in all, this particular bonus I just don't think is going to be as big of a thing for most of you. And finally, a couple last little notes to bring up, which is, once again, most of these sort of strike tests were done in a more controlled training room environment. In a real battle, things are going to be a bit different. Uh, one, enemy ships are likely to be moving, which means that if they're aware of you and they're aware that the strike is coming, they can maneuver against you, which means they can turn, they can make life difficult and challenging, and it's going to be harder to set up that strike. However, there's also other things you have to consider. One, if you are doing that kind of returning strike, a lot of uh, players, once they see that you know your aircraft are past their sort of midpoint and you're going behind them, they might actually stop paying attention to you, which means that when you do come back in for the strike, they might not maneuver against you because they're simply not aware of you or Another possibility is that, you know, they, they don't react fast enough because, you know, you really have to be paying attention to the minimap to see the change in direction and the aircraft coming back and all that. And maybe they don't get turned around to control click you and things like that. And by not control clicking, they would lose 30% of their ADPS. So all of these factors are going to play out more in real battles. Still, if you're in a situation where the only targets you can strike are really heavy AA targets, you know, and you can't execute it correctly, the skill can allow you to attack those ships where in normal cases you could not. Anyways, folks, I hope you enjoyed this Captain's Academy episode. If you have any questions or comments regarding the skill, leave those in the comments section below. Aside from all that, take care, have yourselves a good one, and I'll talk to all of you again really, really soon.